Hey, what is up, everyone? You know who it is. It's Rich. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to do an update video and uh, a little bit of a journey of a thousand miles. I can talk about stuff. It was actually cool. So I tweeted last night. It was I. I my studio was really becoming a disaster. I've been working a lot and just you know like there's a period of time where um, the more you're doing stuff, it's like it just was really unorganized. And I was like, all right, I finished. I I was helping a friend. He he. Uh, I'll, keep it kind of vague but he had a lot of commissions lined up and I stepped in to help him get some of the work done and so uh, I did that for a week it was fun though it was actually it was a nice change of pace it was very um kind of uh fun and I was able to experiment uh more than you normally would on like a job so anyway it was nice to help them and uh, I'm gonna drop off the art for them today and uh so yeah when i was done i was like it was a little it was too late in the day to get started working on something completely new and uh, i decided to um get my shit organized and it was interesting because i i've been thinking about making this announcement for like a little while but I, i'm i'm nearly sure that i'm not inking anymore <laughs> like like as a job i'll ink myself but in terms of like actually being an inker where that's my job description i've turned down opportunities to ink stuff which was a little scary honestly just because it's like work and guaranteed money and on very big projects too um but uh yeah i passed and uh i'm like i've i've got stuff that i want to do and so as i was organizing my office i finally realized this is the this is literally the first time in my career that i can completely set things up for myself sounds weird but but i don't have to have certain tools out that i might use on someone else or just it's like if it's not what i need to be focused on it can go it can be gone it's a, it's a very interesting position to be in that i've never actually experienced so what's funny is i was going through my desk and just kind of like you know I had stuff everywhere there was eraser dust everywhere and just all this stuff and it's like you have to every couple of months clean all that stuff up especially if i'm gonna be shooting videos i don't want my office to look like a complete you know disaster and then it never really gets that bad to be clear but uh yeah so it was it was funny and and i had bought a lot of supplies over the last couple of years just you know trying different things but the problem is is you can't always bring that stuff into like your workflow meaning that like um I had bought, uh, is just a simple example, the, um, let me see what they're called exactly so I don't mess up the name, the Pilot Parallel Pens. So I bought three of them. I should have just bought this set, but I didn't think I was going to need the biggest of the big. So I got the orange one, the lighter orange one, and the green one, which is a 1.5, a 2.4, and a 3.8. The other one is a 6.0, which is the blue one. I don't have that one. Um, I think I'm going to get it just to have it. <laughs> I, if I need to order supplies next time, I'll throw one of those in <laughs> just to see. But uh, I've never, ever been like it. There's nothing that I've really worked on where I went like, I could bring this in and see how it goes. I've played around with it just on scratch paper, but it's really weird. It's like I don't have to keep folders on my desk of jobs that I'm working on or, you know, like the thought of an editor going like, hey, like, when do you think you're going to be done with that thing? I'm very time conscious and I'm very reliable. So it's it's an interesting thing for me because the I think the the, the things that I don't need to worry about are, are things like being late on jobs or being um, unreliable. I'm probably too reliable. So <laughs> the only thing that I wish that I could adjust now is I just I, I've, I say it constantly. I wish that there was more time in the day. I want six hours. You guys have heard me say it. Six hours would be perfect. I don't think I'm going to get it. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, that was really, really exciting. And it, it's like, I'm looking around just going like, man, everything that I have here now is for me. It's mine. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. I have to get a little bit of, I have a stack of stuff that I need to go and just put out in the storage just to get it out of my way. But yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. I was, I was flipping through a stack of art and I found a bunch of early Blaster Kid design sketches that I had done. And they were fun to see. There were some um, panel layouts or like, not 
like I don't, wouldn't call them storyboards. What do you call them? Like thumbnails. I had probably ten or fifteen thumbnails of some of the pages. So it's cool to see that stuff and kind of go like, okay, like well, how did I handle that? How am I thinking about that scene now? If it's a scene I haven't drawn yet, and stuff like that. And um, Sunday, I. Th- think that I'm going to announce the colorist and show the samples and stuff that they've done. So that, that'll be fun. I think for people to check out. And again, I can't thank everyone enough that submitted stuff. I mentioned on, uh, Twitter, there was 87 color submissions all total. And, uh, it was really, really interesting seeing everybody's, um, vision for the book. I had mentioned that some people work traditionally, like literally like with, um, hand colored art with traditional tools, watercolor or acrylic or whatever it was, up into digital stuff. There were people that were doing um, photo blends where they would blend in photography and superimpose buildings into the scenes and stuff like that. It really covered a very, very wide spectrum of stuff. But, you know, it was pretty easy for me to tell people that were close. And there was there was a few, um, honestly, there was, when I say a few, it sounds like not a lot, but there was there was probably, 10 to 20 of the samples that I thought definitely were were hitting very very close but the person that got it honestly was just it was it was there and uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it now but anyway you'll see the work and you you I think you'll you'll all be excited with with the result and uh, again I can't thank everyone enough that did submit so what else workflow I was just I just went over a book for Patreon and we were looking at Raphael Grandpa's work on um Dark Knight. And he talked about in the back of the book there was a sketchbook and he was talking about that it, at one point he switched to digital uh it sounded to me like he meant digital layouts but he wasn't completely clear if the actual workflow on the book itself was done digitally. I kind of think that he works traditionally. But it, anyway, but at some point he said that he he switched to digital because it was faster and they were running out of time or that time was, uh, you know, of the essence. And um, it hit me. It hit me in two different ways. One, it just hit me is OK, that's a cool. Uh, what would you call it? Like, it's a cool validation of of that the digital does speed up the workflow in certain areas but not all anyone that i've talked to that has worked digitally and especially if they've worked on on it for a while says that there's just parts of the process that are slower there's definitely things that are quicker like if you're a comic book artist I think laying out pages is really, really smart to do digitally because you can move stuff around so nicely. You can try things quickly. It's very non-committal. You can create layers. You can move things around. You can save different versions of the piece. And uh, also, this is a huge one that I don't hear people mention a lot, is um, you you can shrink it down really fast into a two-inch like little look of the page. And you can zoom in bigger, which when you're laying stuff out, you really kind of want to focus more on just the composition and size relationships of things. Um, but uh, that's nice because if you're if you're laying out on an 11 by 17 board, a few things can happen. You can have sort of like um, image distortion, meaning that that things can get wonky, um, things can. Um, uh, you know, there's nothing more annoying than you draw like a real nice figure on a piece of artboard and then you realize that it would be even better if it was just moved over three quarters of an inch. But you've got quite a bit of it done, but you're just looking at it and you're going like, God dang, I just want to pick him up and just scoot him to the left like an inch and then it would be better and the composition would look better. And so with digital, you can at least hopefully avert some of those uncomfortable feelings as you move further into a piece. So I think that that's great. I think finishing pieces digitally can sometimes start to lag a bit, but, um, you know, and then the other thing is you have no original art, but I hear a lot of people talking about, um, how much they fight with the tools in terms of getting a finished look that they want. Eric Kennedy was saying that, uh, he it, it's he spent more time fussing with brushes and pens trying to get the line that he wanted than than he was like i don't know laying stuff out of drawing stuff you know something along the lines of that which i i i could see so yeah for me 
if digital is any part of my workload, it would just be for concepting and laying stuff out as I really am moving along. It was funny too, is, is I had to actually do a paper count yesterday. This is, this will sound funny, but, um, I needed about uh, how many pages of paper? No, it's not like you need it all at once. I mean, you're only going to draw one page at a time. But uh, I need, you know, say Blaster Kids, a 48 page comic. Uh, and, uh, you know, you figure, well, you're going to do a wraparound cover. So you need 50 sheets of board. And then I gave myself like three pieces of paper that I could screw up on. So I was going to tweet and ask people this. I thought this would be a funny question for people. If you do a 20 page book, how many sheets of paper do you need? It sounds like a Tootsie, the Tootsie Roll Pop question. But, uh, Granted, you're going to need to do a cover, so don't take that into consideration. We'll say 21 pieces. You're going to do a cover in a 20-page book. How many sheets of board, if you needed to get it through that job fast, are you going to want nearby? If you had 21 sheets, are you covered? Or do you start over and do you scrap pages? Do you sometimes, you know, get three-quarters of a way through something and you go, ah, oh, this page is a piece of shit. I'm going to start over. It would be funny. I thought it would be funny to ask people that. But anyway, I gave myself three sheets of paper for Wiggle Room, which is ridiculous for me because I'm super, super picky. So good luck with that. I hope it's true, though. But, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is when I did my heavy metal story, I never started over. I did the layouts. I had them done. And when I went to the finished pages, nothing was scrapped. And in fact, I, I earlier earlier on, meaning like like when I was learning, sometimes I would hate a panel, and so you know you would go like, oh, I should just draw the panel again. So you know you draw it like another sheet of board, and then you can kind of digitally drop it in. But I didn't even do that. The heavy metal story I did completely on ten sheets of board. There was no start overs, so I I definitely overcame that sort of pickiness with things. But, you know, I was, I had a lot of different artboard here. I've got some rough DC board. I had some smooth. I have some of the Eon paper. I had some of this other paper. And so everything that I'm using right now is all one board. It seems to be a smooth, either Strathmore or Bristol. I honestly don't know what it is, but I have enough to do, I think, two 48 page graphic novels. So I'm pretty set with paper, but at some point, I will need to, to actually go out and and uh, obtain paper, and that'll be a weird thing. So I haven't had to do it for a job in a long time. I usually will just, if I'm sketching and stuff like that at home, I've usually got extra sheets of the DC smooth board, but obviously that's not going to be happening anymore. So it's interesting. I'm not, well, shoot, I don't want to say that. I, I'm I'm not opposed to trying rough board, but I I I it looked like I had three sheets of it, and there may be another stack of it up in this other. I'm looking right now in front of me, straight ahead, and I've got a big pack or not pack, but I've got about two hundred sheets of like art board. What's really really funny is, and people that know will know, I've got about seventy five sheets. That could be a bit of an exaggeration. I would say somewhere between sixty and eighty sheets of the classic image artboard, brand new, brand new, that I'm gonna use on something. I have always saved it for a special job because it's the best paper and anyone that's ever drawn on it knows what I'm talking about, but it's the, I think it's called, the, it's like EL98. It would have been like the paper that, um, you know, like Travis used on like X-Men Wildcats. It was from that era right around then, 97. The EL, uh, uh, funny enough, stands for Eric Larson, if I'm not mistaken. But it, it, it says Image Comics on the board. There was stuff that was actually earlier than that was that was even better. And I've got a little bit of that, but I don't have enough, I don't think, for a full book. But the stuff that we got about a year or two before that was the best paper ever. That was a three-ply uh, image board. And then it went to the, the like I said, it's called the EL9798. Um, and uh, it's really, really good paper. So yeah, I've always wanted to save that for something special. It was it was always, I, in the back of my mind, I went like, when you get good, this is going to be your reward. <laughs> it's funny, right? So here's a great thing, too, that I can share with all of you. And then I'm going to wrap this up because I need to get going. I've got a lot to do today. Um, uh, I actually have and this is going to be exciting for people that are that are in the blaster kid i have four 
full comics of it. It happened so fast. I was walking the other day and I was thinking about something and I wasn't thinking about a follow-up to the first book. It wasn't that. I was thinking about just drawing and trying to help people draw. And as, as I was solving a problem for someone else, I started thinking about things and it went from literally like a like how to draw a, a certain like armor, <laughs> like a costume design thing for, for someone to holy shit, this not not what I was thinking of, but something like a parallel thought would be great for a second book of Blaster Kid. And when I had the second book, I immediately had the idea for the third book. And then I, I kept tripping out that I was like, holy shit. I'm like, dude, I literally have three full Blaster Kid books now. Uh, there's, there's a lot more that goes into it. But when you've got the core idea of what's going to happen, that's huge. It's a really big step. And this morning or last night, I can't remember when it was, I actually came up with the fourth book. So it's very, very exciting, but but uh, yeah, it ramps up. So that's really, really exciting for me. It's nothing that I need to work on right now, but the fact that, that those three huge puzzle pieces just came into my life over the last like two days is, is actually very, very cool because it wasn't something that I was looking for or really that concerned about, and it just fell into my lap. So anyway, all right, I'm going to end it on that. Have a great day. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all very soon, probably Sunday. All right, later.